This is the USS Drexler, laid to rest the exact same year that it was launched. And this is Hajime Fuji, the man who basically traded his wife and two daughters for the opportunity to self-delete. As late as 1938, the United States supplied Japan with a large majority of its iron, copper, and oil, but the US did have to cut the party a little bit short. I mean, Japan had been invading China since 1931. The United States wanted to stop Japan's military expansion, but also protect China's power and its authority. Considering that China and the US were on the same team, the US looked at that oil supply they were given to Japan and basically said, Turn it off. And, uh... The Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, by air, President Roosevelt has just announced. Japan is dropping bombs on the U.S. naval base in Pearl Harbor. They didn't even say shit. Now, this surprise attack damaged about 300 U.S. aircrafts and killed 2,403 men. Across the nation, Americans were bamboozled and, of course, angry. So the United States of America decides that they, too, must take the righteous path and stand on business. A state of war. Literally declared war on Japan the next day, the U.S. has been basically entered World War II. The truth is though, Japan simply couldn't compete with America's industrial output. After a series of devastating defeats to the Allies, the Japanese couldn't produce enough ships and planes to replace those it was consistently losing. Even worse, the country was running out of experienced men. You're right! I haven't lost my virginity. Who the hell is supposed to fight the war if they're running out of people? Just hanging around. Well, since Japan don't have any experienced fighters, I guess we just won't fight. No, actually, just crash the planes into them instead. <laughs> In desperation, the army created special attack force units called Tokatai or Shimbutai. These are literal suicide squads made up of the army and navy. Our friend Hajime Fuji, he wasn't going to just attempt to join these suicide squads. He actually taught entire classes of young people how to have the correct mentality when going into this. Not only did he want to join, but he got denied. He was told that because he was a family man, and most of the people they sent on one-way missions were single, it's probably not a good idea for him to join. Now, Japan didn't enter World War II with any intention of creating kamikaze pilots and sending them on suicide missions, but Japan definitely expected a quick victory. You could see why they possibly just were not as prepared as they might have needed to be. Now, while Hajime does want to join this kamikaze attack force unit, his wife, Fukuko, also pleaded with him to stay out of the war this guy has two daughters and a wife you know after all what if he dies what, what is supposed to happen to them what are they supposed to do Hajime just could not get over this because as more and more of his students left on suicide missions never to return he just couldn't shake off the idea that he was betraying his words he felt like a hypocrite you know he's sending all of these children off to do something which he himself is not protecting participating in. This is why he again appealed to the army to let him die. Once again, they refuse his request. So now we go back to the wife's shoes. She's trapped. If Hajime stayed in Japan, she'd have her husband, while her daughters would have a father, but he would forever be haunted by his self-perceived betrayal of his students and his country. These two were damn near having a guilt trip battle. The way they think is he would become a ghost, which is a dim spirit in Japanese. Only half alive at best he'd just fade away at worst he'd eventually blame his wife and children for his dishonor on the morning of december 14th 1944 while her husband was away fukuko dressed herself up in her finest kimono and she did the same with her three-year-old and one-year-old finally she wrote her husband a letter urging him to do his duty to the country and to not worry about his family they'd wait for him she then wraps up chico in a cloth backpack and strapped the baby 
baby to her back, then grabbing her three-year-old Kazuko by the hand and left. She walked toward the Arakawa River near the school where her husband taught. Taking a rope, she tied Kazuko's wrist to her own and then proceeded to jump into the freezing waters. The police found the bodies later that morning and Hajime was brought to the spot where they were being laid out. The following evening, he painted a letter to his oldest daughter begging her to take care of her mother and younger sister until he could join them. Then he performed Yubitsume, which means he cut off his pinky finger, and then with his own blood he painted his third appeal to the army. On February 8th, 1945, Hajime became the commander of the 45th Shinbu Squadron. He went on to name the squadron Kaishin. Kaishin means cheerful spirit. Just before dawn on May 28th, the nine planes headed to Okinawa, each carrying a pilot and gunner. To their delight, they came upon the USS Drexler and the USS Lowry. These are two of the United States battleships. Two planes slammed into the Drexler, sinking her within minutes. Not only sinking her, but taking out 158 of his crew, and Hajime was in one of those planes. He could finally be reunited with his family, and I guess in some insane way they can now all be in peace together.